Next, we will have the report of the superintendent. You're up. Well, I think uh, who's scheduled Craig to introduce our CASA group, or are they just all ready to go on their own? Yeah. Okay. We have uh, one of the most unique programs, Columbia Public Schools, I think, uh, celebrating many years, and we've got uh, a slew of people here to tell you some information, answer questions. We appreciate you all being here. I'll Thank let you. Craig take it from there. Thank you for having us here tonight. Um, I'm here to pr introduce two incredibly dedicated young men. Um, we're here to talk to you tonight about uh, the 25th anniversary of the Columbia Aeronautic and Space Association, also known as CASA. Um, Thomas Nabalik. Thomas is a 2012 graduate of Hickman High School, 2012 graduate last year, um, a six-year member of CASA, and Mr. John Gillis, right here. Uh, John is a junior at Rockbridge, and he's also a four-year member of CASA. And they're here to, to show you a brief presentation about what CASA has been over the last 25 years and what they would like to see it become in the future. But before we get started, um, I'd like to recognize one incredibly, incredible volunteer uh, that couldn't be here with us tonight that I feel like you should all know. Um, Miss Polly Hendren. Polly is a, uh, has been a, a volunteer for CASA for the last 15 years. Um, she started when she had some a couple of her children going through CASA, and then she just, I guess she couldn't find a way to say no, and she's stayed ever since. But uh, Polly's known as the fairy godmother of CASA, and she's also, been, she's also been described as the glue that holds CASA together. So I felt like, I felt even though she couldn't be here tonight, that you should know that, that Polly exists. Polly's out there, and Polly's putting in a lot of time. And, it, and CASA really wouldn't be what it is today without, without Polly. So. And I'd also like to recognize the hard work and dedication of one young lady standing over here, Miss Cheryl Haynes. Um, and Cheryl has subbed for CASA for several times over the last four years. Um, Captain Fred Thompson. Fred is a, um, a reserve member of the, a reserve member of the, mil of the uh, Navy, and Fred has been away for uh, the beginning of the school, the end of school, several years. And, and Cheryl has always stepped up and, and, and come to, to help us out. And when Fred came to me and said that he was wanting to move back to Pennsylvania to be with his family, of course I approached Cheryl and I said, "I, I, I need you again." And Cheryl stepped up and. And I just wanted her to stand up, and, and, and really, we wouldn't be here tonight without, without Cheryl. So I wanted to, to recognize her and thank you personally. Um, and without, without any further ado, I think Cheryl and I are going to sit down, and we're going to let uh, Thomas and, and John give their presentation. So thank you for having us. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Adams. So we'll be telling you a bit about the CASA program that's housed at Hickman High School, uh, the Columbia Aeronautics and Space Association, as Mr. Adams said. But before we start, we'd like to ask any um, current and former participants of the CASA program that are here to please stand. But you're not all here to talk about start times. That's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, we'll get started. This is the 25th anniversary of CASA. We'd like to show you a very brief overview of the past 25 years and the experience that some current students have had in the program. This video was made by CASA students in the class, and we'll show it to you now. Um, give us one second, technical difficulties. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Take two. <laughs> Created 25 years ago at Rockbridge by Patrick Dougherty, CASA started as a three-day mission which was set up in the auditorium. In 1991, Jim Kidd moved the program to Hickman, where it took over the old car shop. Over the 
next 23 years, the students built every structure in the building that wasn't already there. This includes the space station, the orbiter, and many of the walls. After Mr. Kidd left CASA in 2001, Navy Captain Fred Thompson took over and taught the class for 12 years. CASA often engages its students in hands-on training, which includes a scuba training held every year in the Hickman Pool and field trips to Skyhaven Airport and Whiteman Air Force Base. This is all in preparation for the annual CASA mission. Students plan all year to simulate the most realistic space experience possible, the only one in the country. Special guests for this year's mission include NASA astronauts Linda Godwin and Steve Nagel and State Representative Stephen Weber. So, Devin, uh, what's the coolest thing about CASA? Well, first of all, would be the community that you develop once you enter the class. I don't know if you can hear me, people watching, but because um, there's quite a bit of construction going on. But you develop quite a few friendships in this class. I mean, really, it just focuses on whatever you want to do in this class, no matter if you're put into this class arbitrarily or if you choose to be in this class. Any interest that you can have, CASA can associate with that, and they'll put you to good use. Let's high school is apply. Apply knowledge we learn in this class and in other classes. Uh, an environment that simulates real life problems instead of like in a math class you'll take a test that's just, you know, numbers that you need to fix. So this actually gives you real real life experience. It's a fun program. I mean I've been in it every year of high school and I'm sure I wouldn't be like the person that I am today without CASA because sophomore year I was like the scared little sophomore in high school. It's like there's so many seniors and juniors and upperclassmen and they're so like big and scary. But in CASA I kind of like found my place. Like the seniors weren't as scary in CASA. They were a lot more inviting and fun and then it just sort of escalated from there. Being in the third or fourth year this year, um, it's been uh, quite a impact on my life because it has taught me leadership skills and uh, teamwork and communication and that kind of thing. It's just, it's it's a one of a kind. I, you can't even really say one of a kind though, because it, it literally is the only one, and CAS is the only thing in the United States that's, that's like uh, what it is. And CAS, you kind of learn different skills and then you apply them, and that's kind of something I've always been interested in is, you know, how can I apply myself in a certain way in this program? And that's going to affect me down the road later on when I have to apply myself into something else. CASA is the only student-run space simulation in the country. We look forward to celebrating our 25th anniversary and are excited for all the mystery the future holds for the program. So as we mentioned, this is CASA's 25th anniversary, and CASA continues to inspire and serve over 100 students each year. The annual mission and all of the training and work that goes into it includes students from 6th through 12th grade. Yeah, that uh, annual mission has allowed students to develop significant problem-solving skills uh, by simulating the building of the International space, sh the space Station, the launching and piloting of spacecraft including NASA space shuttles, the Soyuz capsules, uh, crafts developed in recent years by private enterprises including SpaceX, Sierra Nevada, Virgin Galactic, etc. The students have simulated orbital mechanics needed to pilot the space station, missions to Mars, satellite communications, and much more. Uh, in these simulations, students have had to overcome unique obstacles <coughs> presented to them, uh, develop communication and teamwork skills, overcome, and overcome time and budget constraints, and really learn to think outside of the box. Uh, students have been able to see how their hard work is really applied here and see the solutions that they come up with to problems through to fruition. We've captured the attention of many people involved in the space industry, including Sandra Magnus, who was an astronaut on the last shuttle flight, Wally Funk, a pioneer in women's aviation, and Neil deGrasse Tyson, an astrophysicist largely known for educating the public about space, and many more. We've also had governors, senators, and other politicians come through. A couple of examples 
principles of alum who have been so inspired by their time at CASA to pursue career paths in aerospace industry would be Amanda Steinmetz, who graduated in 2012 and is now working on a degree in aerospace engineering at the University of Alabama in Huntsville, where NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center and United States Army Aviation Missile Command are located. Ann Esbeck is currently a flight controller for the International Space Station at Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. Ryan Ripple, another former CASA member, has held the senior position in the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And these are just a few examples of the long-term impact that CASA has on students. The program's been very successful in giving really thousands of students throughout the years uh, the opportunity to get real, hands-on, real-world experience and apply what they've learned in class and elsewhere in helping to reach their full potential and excel in their futures. So now we'd love to show you what we think CASA could become. Before we do, we'd like to emphasize that although CASA is aerospace theme, the, uh, the theme is not essential to CASA's core. It's, it's very intriguing, uh, gives students a great, great uh, opportunity to show what they've learned, to apply what they've learned. It allows for lots of avenues of expansion, simulation ideas, but the theme is not CASA's core. However, we do like the theme and we see no reason to change it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we see CASA greatly expanding on the idea of applied creativity. What we've seen in CASA is that when students have the opportunity to really apply what they've learned and the material that they learn in class and elsewhere, life experience, to really apply it, then they're pushed to learn more and see what else they can accomplish. And that's a great thing about CASA. The program, uh, we see it becoming a real problem-based learning program where collaboration, app application, and implementation are implemented and integrate material taught in traditional classes. This program would be kind of a hub for STEM education, but not exclusively. CASA actually currently integrates many skills outside of STEM education, including public relations, publication, woodworking, marketing, outreach and education, history, foreign languages, and many more. We would integrate other educational programs, including Project Lead the Way and FIRST Robotics, IT, and possibly more. This could even become a new fourth year program. We see a need as the district moves towards four year high schools, as students are able to continue their focus on their chosen career path. Where we have many classes designed around a three year high school experience, for example, Electronics 1, 2, and 3, there is no fourth class for them, these students to take. They could come to CASA at, during their fourth year. We think that this program could really be something that CPS could use to put them a step ahead. When people ask what CPS has that other school districts don't, CASA would be the answer. CASA can move CPS into the future. CASA has been located in many places. It started in the halls of Rockbridge and moved to the old auto shop that it has been in for the past 25 years. Looking towards the future, we'll show you our concept of the ideal tool to keep a CASA growing, a new facility. Based on our combined experience of over 10 years in the program and the input gathered from CASA students and alum, we've developed an idea for the kind of a facility that we think CASA could benefit from the most. We'd like to show you a very brief overview of our idea. We want to emphasize that whatever facility CASA is housed in, it does not define the program. It is simply a tool. We want to also emphasize that we are not architects, um, and this we may not necessarily follow building codes, ADA standards, <laughs> or anything like that. Um, <laughs> for the purpose of this visual, we'll assume that this facility will be located where the current CASA building is, and we'll address funding concerns a bit later on in our presentation. All right, so we'll take it through you now. Okay, so you can see here, the, this is Hickman's campus, just south of the main building. This is the current CASA building. We'll zoom in on it here. All right, so current CASA building right here. The new gym, which isn't shown in this image, it comes right up to this, this uh, west wall of the building. Over here to the east, these are just two sheds. Uh, one of them is the Cassie shed. And right here, that's just a semi-truck that happened to be in the picture. <laughs> just to clear up any confusion there. All right, so here's the floor plan of the current building. All right, so it's about 14 by 27 meters. 
and it has about 320 square meters of floor space. Here's the footprint of our concept building. It's 20 by 35 meters and has 700 meters of ground floor space. And I will show what the outside of the building could look like. Back to the idea of CASA being a point of pride for CPS and moving the district into the future. We think it would be awesome if this facility was powered entirely by green energy. Whether it be wind, solar, a combination of the two, or some other form of green energy, the building could perhaps even contribute back to the grid. Here's a view of the building from farther out, just to give some perspective. Here's what the building might look like with the roof off. Again, the floor space of this facility <laughs> is is more than twice that of the current CASA building. A nice entryway would provide a proper welcome area for visitors and a gathering space for participants. Shown here is the multi-purpose room. Mostly this could be used as additional classroom space, but it could also be used for a project workspace, a presentation area, etc. It would allow for a space to serve food during a mission week even. And that additional class space could be used for those different classes that would be integrated into the program. Shown here is the pilot training stations, uh, which is what we currently use our pilot's lounge floor for. All right, now we'll show you the main classroom slash missing mission control area. It's tiered in lecture hall style and would provide a great experience during our simulations. An important note here is that while the current classroom can sit 16 students, this room could, sit thir could seat 32. All right, um, this room would feature cutting edge technology, including large projection areas where the, where the uh, smart boards are, kind of in the, I can show you, right here. Perhaps if funding allowed, that could even be a large interactive touch wall. It's the kind of thing that, you know, puts this building into the future and shows, gives students the tools that they might be able to use when they're in their careers. Um, all right. The whole building could have in-floor cable runs to keep cables and possibly the desktop computers that go with each workstation out of the way. This is just one example of, the, of how CAS could take advantage of a, build, of a building built specifically for the program. Shown here is the equivalent of CAS's current star field. I prefer to refer to this as more of a simulation area. The current star field is approximately 140 meters. This new simulation area is 340 square meters and would more than double the space that students have to expand into and apply what they've learned. This space would be big enough to even house a full first robotics field, unlike any other current CPS facility. Uh, this area would be a combination of CASA's current public affairs office and production room. This is where the live outgoing feed of CASA's simulation would be produced, where all of the public relations and main program business could be conducted. Uh, here are, of, are some computers where video editing, script writing, social media communication, etc. Could, could all be accomplished. Right below this room is the equivalent of CASA's current ninja layer. This this is where all of the problems that students face during the simulations are developed and implemented. Uh, while students are currently practically crammed to a closet, and those of you that have been there probably know what I mean, uh, <laughs> this gives ample room for, to work and develop those problems to present to students in simulations. And finally, this is a tool room and storage space. It would replace the current CASA shed give lots of room to store what we need to. So again, the facility, especially the multi-purpose room and simulation area would be reconfigurable and adaptable areas. If the facility were, were to be placed where the current CASA building is, it could possibly be connected with the new gym to allow easy access uh, where those classrooms are. If it were to be placed elsewhere, the current CASA building could be reconfigured into, uh, into an auxiliary building for this program or perhaps other classrooms and office space. So assuming that the idea for allowing CASA to expand and move towards its potential is put into development, 
we and we work out where the facility would be located, funding is an obvious issue, and so we'll address that. <laughs> uh, funding a project of this magnitude would not would not be a cheap would not be cheap, especially as Cassie grows to use industry standards and cutting edge technology to really give the students the resources that they need. To help ease the financial burden on Columbia Public Schools, Cass's funding for the internal technology and tools used could be spread out among different funding opportunities. Uh, government grants are a good starting point. We've already been getting grant from places like uh, NASA Missouri Space Grants Consortium to fund some of this year's student projects. Parts of the facility would be shared with other programs, including FIRST Robotics and Project Lead Way, so perhaps funding could be shared between them. Uh, businesses would be in huge support of a program like this that encourages students to apply their skills in a real-life scenario, making the students better prepared for the workforce. Locally, there are many places to look for sponsorships, including IBM, Reynolds Journalism Institute, and CASA even embraces such a unique learning experience, unlike any other in the world, that large foundations and businesses could be behind us in pushing for this program to grow. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, along with the George Lucas Educational Foundation, would be prime targets as they seek to fund this kind of innovative education that CASA embraces. All right. So our request for, for you guys is that you task the CPS administration with looking at our ideas for both the program and the facility, uh, have an architect take a look at the building, maybe get a rough cost estimate, um, things like that, but really to open up, the, open up discussion on the topic of CASA's future. The CASA program is independent of the aerospace theme. The facilities we use are even our name. To quote Shakespeare, what's in the name that which we call a rose by another name would smell as sweet. As CASA grows to be larger and more efficient educational opportunity, these details could be changed to better suit the improved program. We, along with the rest of CASA's current generation of students, understand that we will never have the opportunity to use this new facility, but hope the next generation of CASA cadets, and maybe our own kids someday, will. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you for um, having us. So uh, I, I was able to, to talk with these guys uh, previously, and they showed me a presentation. I, I suspect I, I had mentioned that we probably we might have an, a great opportunity here. The, their green building. And our Peckham and Wright architectures, Nick Peckham is just really all about green structure. So I, I had suggested that they might, you know, discuss with the administration essentially of having our current architectures who are familiar with that area in that land to just kind of take a look at their plans and work with these guys mm -hmm. on, on seeing what might be possible. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's a uh, been in that building. Many oh, yeah, the building it's, now, uh, yeah. you, you have taken duct tape to a new level out there. <laughs> yes, we have. It's impressive. Yes, indeed. We are duct tape experts. I think, uh, another thing to stress is how you know, it's more than just the science guys that are out there, uh, especially you know, with, the, with all the different types of uh, uh, marketing and journalistic, uh, you know, just really being able to do their hands-on out there. Kind of some of the things that they do at the Career Center, but really you know, another step with it in another area. So um, if that's the consensus of the board, you know, I would encourage the administration to kind of follow through with that. Mm -hmm. We could bring that Those back along the way facilities, yeah. too, at mm -hmm. some point. Yeah. Glad to. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Okay, guys. Right. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks a lot.